All the content contained in this webcast is for informational purposes only. The investments and strategies contained in this webcast may not be suitable for you. Please consult your own independent financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. Welcome back, traders. 1030 update here. We kind of got a mixed market. Dennis, uh, the S&P's tried to get to that glow back slow. Uh, good support there. Got a little bit of a bounce, but can it get above the close? And now we're just kind of trading quietly here. You know, it's, you get these days where it bounces around a little bit in the first 20 minutes, then all of a sudden the high frequency tractor or uh, vice grip starts where they just kind of hold the places and they start scalping for their pennies and the stocks don't go nowhere. So that's kind of what I see starting to ha materialize here right now. But we do have some stocks that are moving a little bit better than that, Joel. IBM. Uh, pretty wild range. We talked about this one in the pre-market show, talking about that 202 area being supported. Opened right there at 202.15, immediately bounced almost $2 up to 204.07. That was in a heartbeat, and then started to sell off. I got lucky. I actually did buy the open on that one, too, kind of, I guess, practicing what I was preaching. Uh, I did get lucky, bought the open. I brought it up, you know, two seconds later after I got the stock. I was trading in, in, in the 203 handle, so I took market, it for a quick market. buck. <laughs> What's that? What's that, Joel? <laughs> yeah, you said you sold it at the market. Yeah, well, I never sell at the market, and we never use market orders. But I limited it out. I was like, "Get me out! I'll take the two oh, the quick point. It wants to give me a buck in two seconds. I'll take it." Obviously, I came back down, and then that's something else to think about too, though. Like we talk about support, but if it hangs out there long enough, which it started to do, eventually it usually does take it out. So you had this little uh, fake out there down through two oh two, where you, it, it shakes out everybody that's playing it off support like Johnny come lately guys that are identifying the support you know 5 10 20 minutes into the trading day uh, and then they put it on they shakes them out and then the thing pops again so and you get the people that are shorting it through that level too the fake outs are so all over the place right now you really have to be aware of it but right off the hop you know those opening prints often are very uh, you know sometimes those are the best plays right there because you get that added volatility and it can swing right bounce right off support until it starts hanging out there for too long and then takes it out yeah, I mean, if uh, I'm not sure what, how many of our subscribers, you know, are taking a look at the numbers that uh, you know we post on the site. Uh, we do kind of reiterate them during the shows. But uh, if you look, I was doing okay on this one today. Uh, 204.15. That was Tuesday's low, and we got up to 204.07. So it attempted to fill that gap from Tuesday's low. Surely didn't spend a lot of time up there, and is now sold off. Uh, we d also, on the downside, we dipped below that 313 low at 201.61. We are hanging out a buck above that, so it looks like uh, perhaps the low is in. The selling pressure is off IBM for now. Uh, below that 201.61, uh, Katie, by the door, we'll hit 200 for sure. Um, Apple, Dennis, Apple getting some follow through, and uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, praising the stock. Yeah, Apple, uh, definitely. We, it was interesting in the pre-market. It came out, um, and, and, and the Goldman put it on the conviction buy list saying, you know, they think it's going to be a good quarter to buy Apple ahead of earnings. Stock was trading around 608, and it just kind of sat there in the pre-market for like 10 or 15 minutes. I was like, this thing isn't going to rally on that? You know, it's Goldman Sachs coming out. I was like, surprised. And then all of a sudden, about 20 minutes later, then it started to buy. And obviously, during the regular session here, it's been off to the races. The stock opened right near the low, opened 613.88, and it had a low of 612.12, a little wash out off the hop. But pretty much in the first two minutes, it started to just take off and marched right to 620, fell off there. And now we've kind of just been chopping around this range. But, I mean, you know, you do have an and you have some catalysts coming up, the earnings coming up. Here's the stock. You know, if we could bring up the two-day chart on this thing, uh, here's the stock. Uh, well, i got to go further back than that. But um, in, in any regard, here's the stock, obviously, that had that low there yesterday at 571. You talked about the wash. We talked about it on the pre-market show. We have rallied almost 50 points from that in two trading sessions. That is just incredible. Obviously, you know, the herd swung. They're in the wrong. They're always on the wrong side of the trade. So everybody gets bearish. You probably want to get bullish. That's exactly what happened. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, man, with the catalyst and stuff. You think this thing can march for the 644 before next week, Joel? 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. So you're saying. Yeah. I, what I think you're going to find here, Dennis, is that we're running into the area that it basically that it broke down from. Okay. Uh, you know, I kind of was like 622, and then, it, you know, it bounced to 620. But really where it broke, fr- broke down from is 620. Okay. okay. And now you've taken this back on a couple days. I think it's going to be very rough sledding for Apple between 620 and 625. 624.70 was the high on the Friday. It opened up and, you know, f- you know fell back down so anybody that accumulated any kind of positions or added to their positions at that level which was to find support i mean this is a gift horse in the mouth if you're looking to square your positions ahead of uh earnings i mean here trading at 616 617 i mean it's well over the 50 percent bounce dennis but uh i think i don't think that 612 to 610 gap is going to hold that we have today i don't know if it's going to get taken out today but i really look for his trouble in this at 625 and perhaps maybe having a trade between six hundred and six and a quarter. Uh, do you know what day it's at? The earnings are actually yeah, announced. You know what? I had it written down. I don't have it in front of me. Sorry right to now, throw you under the bus again. Me under the bus. I'll, I'll, I'll get that information. We'll give it to you tomorrow, though. On our, but on our show. before we leave the tech sector, Dennis, I just wanted to uh, talk about the Intel a little bit. Uh, you know, it did get shellacked pretty good in the pre-market. Did get um, a little bit through that pre-market low, but we did identify that 2750 area, you know, as potential support. Anybody that was short in that stock at the 52-week high, because it was a 52-week high, right? Someone has to sell it. Uh, get a point, you know, a good point in this Intel uh, within a day, a good opportunity, and it opened right near the low. Um, one that we kind of missed the boat on, uh, Dennis, was Halliburton. Yeah, we kind of did, Joel. We were talking about Halliburton, and we thought it might struggle. We looked at all these multiple highs, uh, just trying to go to the daily here, where we were looking at this whole area. There's, you know, five, six, eight different highs all through the 33s. We thought it might struggle to get through that whole 33 area, and then we thought 34, if it got that high, might put a cap on it. But lo and behold, it cut through there too, got as high as 34.28. So we didn't do very good on this one. You know, we do good on some. You can't be right on them all. The stock we thought it was gonna, you know, it was gonna, you know, obviously trade higher. We just thought it might struggle in the 33s a little more than it did. Um, and this stock has really, uh, really shown us up here, and it is bouncing pretty good here, Joel. Revenge trade. Revenge trade. Short the thing right now. and uh, I'm glad I didn't make a trade on this one. I really didn't know where to put it on. I was looking. I was like, eh, where do you you know, start shorting this thing up? But, you know, it just kind of keeps cutting through all the resistance levels, all those old highs it's cut through now. So really difficult, really difficult one to call here. Uh, one of my friends has texted me there right at the open on Schlumberger. It's something I should have thought of, and I didn't. Um, obviously, Schlumberger will have a sympathy move with a play like Halliburton. Uh, he was able to get some so kudos to him it opened right at the low of the day actually down a nickel so if we go just looking at the daily chart here opened at 69.30 and the stock went straight up from there um, obviously trading up over a buck now with the sympathy move with Halliburton so if your pair traders out there were able to grab some Schlumberger off those Halliburton numbers you're probably pretty happy with that opening print Okay, it's always interesting to, you know, take a look at a stock, uh, you know, a day after earnings and kind of see what the residual effect is. I mean, if there's not a huge reaction to the stock on the actual day that earnings are released, um, at least you know that the fundamental news is out and, and the complexion of the stock is probably set for the next three months, barring upgrades and downgrades. And here you have a scenario with uh, Goldman Sachs, Dennis. Um, but you've been talking about this 115 level. It sliced through it today, but boom, it's popping right back above it. Yeah, it did, Joel. This is when I bought off the hop, too. Um, actually, I was thinking it's going to open right around that 115 support. It opened a little lower than I thought. It opened actually at 114.73. Uh, but initially, but it popped right up for me. I was able to grab a quick 50 cents off it, which I did. It actually traded and bounced that 50 cents. He probably could have played it two or three times before it did end up cutting out through that 114.73 opening price. Cut down, made a low 114.27. Call that the fake out too. This is a theme happening. You get these technical. Uh, that look like breakdowns, but they become fake downs. And this is what I'm seeing again and again. The high frequency guys will do that to shake out all the people who are along the stock off that support level, 
take it out, sucker in some shorts, and then rally the thing and keep rallying it. And that's exactly what's happening. So sometimes the play lately has been to buy these breakdowns because they do become fake downs and they go the other way. It's that whole herd mentality thing. You get too many people leaning on the same level. They'll wash out if it goes through there. And then you get the, those traders and they'll flip there. It sometimes gets short and then they take it the other way. I mean, market likes to give maximum pain and the high frequency traders, that's how they make money is by pushing the stocks around like that, making patterns on the charts that kind of look, you know, fishy. And uh, then they sucker you to go the other way. And that's exactly, you can see Goldman now, 116.27 really rallying back here. So uh, interesting, interesting chart there, Joel. Okay. Um, also, to kind of you know, analyze J&J &J kind of from the same perspective, uh, kind of disappointed the street a little bit, made a new fresh low for the move, bounced up, closed right near the high of the day, boom, comes in the morning, opens 30 cent lower, and just never, never looked back from that open, Dennis. There's another one, too, here, Joel. Some of the defensive names have been doing pretty good. Johnson & Johnson has not been pretty good. It's down to stock picking now, not even sector-specific stocks. You know, they obviously had earnings. Um, it bounced around a little bit off of that uh, from a couple days ago. But, you know, today opened weak and just continued weaker. Why does that happen? Well, a lot of times this happens because you've got these OPG traders that that will basically say, oh, look, a 30 cent down move for Johnson & Johnson is a pretty significant uh, move for that stock. It's probably going to open at the low and bounce. When it doesn't bounce right away, it's your signal to get out. I actually was one of those traders. I did buy the open, but because I didn't get that initial bounce right away, I was like, oh, I don't like this. And I turned around, and I was able to scratch the trade. That was a good scratch for me because the thing is down now 35 cents from where I, uh, I had initially bought it. So it's always key off the bat to identify, you know, if the trade isn't working for you, how you know that the trade's not working you're not making money so you've just got to keep it simple like that and the trade especially off the open if they're not going green for me right away i'm already thinking something's fishy here you know if i you know think it's a nice setup and it doesn't work for me right away you got to be quick off the hop to get out because sometimes you can really get hurt so um, there's lots of you know players doing a lot of different things in johnson and johnson right now it's post earnings but a lot of things can happen funny things happen with stocks when they're a day or two after earnings joel and this stock is not looking good on the charts at all. Um, speaking of post earnings activity, Dennis, uh, this Google is not acting right. I mean, if you want to Google a stock that's not acting right in Google, <laughs> <laughs> Go Google's going to come up, Dennis. Um, you saw the bounce that Apple got yesterday, and I know you like to use those stocks as you know crutches or you know watch the activity in one. Well, Google rallied yesterday, but boy, it could not hold that rally. Closed very weak on the day, took out yesterday's low with relative ease, but couldn't quite get to the low of the move here, Dennis. I mean, we've talked about this six hundred dollar level as being a you know critical support, but. Boy, it's, I mean, that's not, shouldn't that stock a rally more yesterday and at least be rallying a little bit today? Yeah, you'd think with the Apple rally and this rallying here, I don't like the relative strength on this Google whatsoever here now. It had a decent rally yesterday morning, but gave it back. Um, obviously, the market was very strong. The market's holding up okay. This stock is not holding up okay. I think the 600 at level is starting to act like a magnet. I wouldn't be surprised if it does test it today. If it takes that out, you might see a similar washout trade where you get traders washing it out. But be careful for those, you know, we talk about the breakdown and the fake down stuff too. So you want to be cautious. But, I, you know, the, I, that 600 level is big for this stock. Um, it's similar setup to what the Apple was. If it starts to break through there, you almost think you could have some type of a wash out there too, Joel. And what's going to be the driver for this stock now that, well, going forward for, for for the next three months? Yeah, you you're, know? you're exactly right, Joel. You've had an earnings report already come out. They've already announced a two-for-one stock split. I mean, you know, there, there's really, you know, I don't know what the driver's going to be. Unless there's some more upgrades coming and people are getting real bullish again, I think people are going to start getting disinterested in this one. I'm not loving the chart here, so I don't, I wouldn't want to be long the stock. Okay, um, I think we've covered the whole gambit here. Is there anything uh, anything we're missing on the radar? Uh, just the market holding up here uh, relatively strong, Joel. I know you know, you had a couple big you know, IBM, Intel reporting bad earnings, but the market's holding up okay. We're up a half a point here now. Uh, what do you think of the overall market? Um, you see the scenarios. We always talk about Globex highs and Globex low. Well, we missed the Globex low by a point, and that's been the springboard for a nice bounce up here, to, up to above settlement or above settlement, um, but we missed a Globex high by two points. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't 
feel I don't feel real long being comfortable uh, being long here at these levels. I mean, you do got some room on the upside at thirteen eighty six seven. 86.75 and then yesterday's high but it just seems like it's just starting to get a little heavy and we're, we're going to trade around settlement here um, we could just go back down and dip under 13.80 and pop up back up to 13.83.50 I mean it really doesn't as of right now it doesn't seem like we have a real clear direction in the market I mean if you want to take a look at what IBM's doing now with stuff I guess you got to be leaning a little bit towards the short side well, yeah, because it's actually IBM. We'll just bring it up here again, 201.80. It's starting to drift down there, coming dangerously close to that low of the day here too, Joel. So I, I don't know what to say. This market, you know, it has been pretty strong here for a few days. So um, obviously you were talking about the IBM specifically, and if it starts to break down to a 201.60, I wouldn't want to be long that one either. 200 Magnet could come into play on that one too. But that's my overall take here. Uh, so that's our show for today too, folks. Uh, we will be back with you tomorrow morning with our pre-market update.